Welcome to this video on Microsoft Teams meeting options. So as there's been some recent updates to the meeting options in Microsoft Teams, I thought it'd be useful to gather it all together and I'm going to walk you through the five different meeting options and why you might want to use them and the benefits of them. I'm going to do some deeper dive videos into some of the more technical meeting options a little bit later, but this is just going to give you a really great overview. So the first option is a quick meeting. And you can do that from the calendar, which is what I am currently in at the moment. Or you can obviously, when you're chatting to someone or you're in a channel, you can start a meeting really nicely just by clicking on the little phone icon. But when you're in the calendar, you have the meet now option. And what you can use that for is just to create a quick meeting area. You can invite other people to it. If you create a meeting from a chat or a channel, anyone who has access to that chat or channel will be in there. But if you do it from your calendar, then it'll just be you. But you can obviously share the link once you've created that meeting space. I use this quite often if I want to test or trial anything. If I want to record my screen, it's quite useful to create a quick meeting and then you can record the meeting and edit it in software if you want, if you have software. Or if I want to practice a training session or a presentation that I'm going to have to do later, I find that quick meetings is quite a nice way of doing it because it's your safe space. There's no one else going to be in there unless you invite them and you can just get a feel of how it's going to work. Um, and how you might want to present that session or that training session if you do training within the sort of virtual environment. So quick meetings or meet now is a really useful way of just getting an ad hoc meeting started for whatever reason. The second option is a general Teams meeting. So you can obviously do this from Outlook or whatever calendar you use. But if I just double click anywhere on the screen, is going to open up the new meeting option and in here I can create a meeting. It's automatically, because I'm in Teams, it's automatically added an online meeting. You can see the toggle right in the middle of my screen and what I can do here there is I can just start to add the information in. So this is going to be a project meeting. I'm not going to add any additional at, uh, attendees, but that's where you would add your attendees. And then obviously you're going to select your date and your time. I try to, if it's a project meeting or a one-to-one, -one, I try not to have it in half an hour or hour. I try to do something like 15 minutes or 45 minutes, just so it falls out of the norm a little bit. And we get a little bit of a break, just in case we have back-to-back -back meetings. You can also select an all-day meeting if it's an all-day piece. And you've got the repetition option so you can repeat it if it's a weekly or monthly or it's just a standalone meeting. You can link channels and you can link locations. We've got an online meeting, so it's going to be a virtual Teams meeting anyway. And then just further down at the bottom, you've got the ability to add details in. So just like any other meeting, you would want to let people know what that meeting was about. Because online meeting is toggled, on the right hand side, you can see you've got the option to change some of the, the general standard settings for your Microsoft Teams tenant. So I'm set as people in my org can and guests can bypass the lobby, but you can obviously make a change to that for an individual meeting, dependent on the settings that have been set high level. And you have the, I have the ability here to record automatically. If you click on more options, you can make changes so that's just a general teams meeting it's online so it will give you a link and you can share that with anyone who you want to attend and have a meeting whether it be a one-off or whether it be a repeating meeting so that's your second option the third option i'm just going to discard that and come out the third option is the same thing but recently we were given the option to turn off online meeting so that toggle in the middle of the screen if I turn this off you'll see the options the settings on the right hand side have disappeared 
And now I've just got a standard offline meeting. So this is not going to give me a Teams link. I am going to have to put in a location because I'm going to be expected to meet people somewhere. But it's exactly the same. You would fill out the same detail, but there's not going to be a link. So this is really great if you've got an offline meeting. You don't have to put a link on there. So it's not going to confuse people and they're going to think, am I meant to be in a room or is this a virtual meeting and can I do this from wherever I'm based? So a really nice bit of functionality there. You can still do it straight from Teams so you don't have to go into Outlook or any other application that you use. But just remember to toggle off online meeting. You won't have a link there and you will be able to create that meeting with a room, a location that you're going to meet everyone in and have an offline meeting. So that's your third option. It's going to close that one down as well. Okay, so options four and five are actually in the top right hand corner and it's the drop down next to new meeting I'm going to go to and I've got a webinar option is my option number four. So this is where you want to present to a really large audience and you want them to register for your event. You can create a page, you've got a link, you can gather details from them, you can have co-presenters, co-organisers and you can make it into a really nice event piece. What this allows you to do is allow people to join but you limit the access of what they can do, especially if you've got 50, 100, 1,000 plus people joining, you don't want them to be chatting constantly. You can turn things like that off. You don't want them to be able to present the screen or unmute themselves. That's really great if you've got to share lots of information. You can QA, you can have a chat open if you want to, and you can get people um, online, but you control a lot more of that. So this is quite technical, this one. If I click on webinar, you'll see I have a new webinar screen. I'm just going to put in just a title for a new product launch. You've got the exact same start and end time, so you want to put that information in there. Give your event a description. And then you've got an event group. So if you want to have your, you and another couple of colleagues as the co-organisers, the co-producers, then you can add their information into the details there. You are automatically a presenter, so I've got that information in there, but you can add more presenters as well. So presenters can share their screen and talk. Co-organisers can manage the event um, and help you produce the event as well. So there's a slight difference between organisers and presenters. Imagine if you are the best way I think about it is if I'm doing a face-to-face -face event, uh, maybe in a big auditorium or something, I might have a number of presenters, but I'll have producers that are managing it, that are making sure the right presentation's on the screen, the room's organised. You, there's If there's a microphone going around, I re open up for people to ask questions. They're your organisers. Your presenters are just there to present their information and talk and share their knowledge. It's a great way of thinking about those. You can have this locked down to your organisation or you can have it public just in case people uh, may not be logged into your network when they sign up for the event. And you can see the general settings at the bottom. So I've got my Q&A on as default, my chat on as default, my reactions on, attendee camera off and attendee mics off. You can change that once you've set it up but you can see some of the information at the bottom. So the first thing you need to do is once you've put in a title, a description, and added your co-organisers and presenters, you're just going to click on save. And once it's saved, then you can go in and add the rest of the detail. Once you've done that, you'll see on the left-hand side it's opened up. I've got some other options in the middle and to the right-hand side. When I've done everything, I'm going to publish the site and it'll give me a link to share so people can sign up to my webinar. But if I just scroll down and show you that, bit's exactly the same. But on the left-hand side, I want to work through and just add any bios to my presenters. 
I can select their theming options. And this will be the site and the link that people click on to join up to your webinar. I can change those if I need to. It may be restricted in your organization. If I open up the registration piece, you can see I've got a capacity there so I can limit how many people sign up and I can get information from those signups if I want to, but there's nothing there at the moment. It's just a general soft sign up. Once I get people signed up, I can go in and see attendee status. I can look at the communications that will go out. So it's really a big event that's already been set up to you for you. It can, you can preview all of that detail. And obviously, once you've got signups and data and everything, you can have a look at reporting once the event has ended. When you've played around with that, when you've added all that information, it is a little bit more of a bigger undertaking rather than just creating a normal meeting, but you've got the restrictions in place to manage the higher numbers of users and just make it a lot more seamless and smooth for those users. You can view your draft and when you are ready, publish that site so that people can then sign up for your webinar and get the details. And as soon as you publish, you're going to get that sharing link, which you can drop into instant message. You can email out. You can put in a chat or a channel and share it with whoever you want to join your webinar. If I click off that. You can see I've got the copy link event there. I can view the site and three dots will just remember anywhere in Microsoft. Three dots will just give me a few more options. So if I just remove that, you can see it's now just been added into my calendar. If I click on it, for me, it looks and feels like a normal team meeting. If I just double click on it there to open up a little bit more detail, feels ever so slightly different, but very similar. And you can see I've got the same sort of things that I would have in a normal meeting about managing apps, adding apps and stuff like that for polls. And I can cancel. And if I go to manage event, it's going to take me back to that screen where I've got all those different options. The final one then, and that's number five on the drop down, is virtual appointment. And again, it's one of the newer ones. It's to give a really lightweight meeting experience for external guests. So this is really great if you do a lot of product demos or you talk to people outside of your organization a lot and sometimes they have tr trouble joining, especially if they don't use Teams within their organization. So they've got to try and download something and mess around with it and they really struggle to get onto meetings. And you just want a nice, quick, easy, simple seamless solution. Virtual appointments will give you that. It allows your external guests to log in using a mobile or using a web browser. So it's nice and easy. And you can drop them into a virtual lobby as well. So you can decide when you want those people to come into the meeting or not. And that is all on the right hand side. Very, very similar. I'm just going to pop in a product demo you can see here i've got external guests so i can add some external guests popping in their name and then i want to pop in their email address i want to make sure it's right it will recognize if you haven't put in a proper email address if you've missed a dot or a com or something and if I want to add more, I would just add additional guests and keep moving those down. And they will get that really lightweight experience. Feels very similar after that. I've got dates and times or all day. I've got my repetition options. And then I can come in and add any attendees within my organization. And they'll get the normal meeting experience. So it's just broken up depending on whether you're an external or an internal and meaning that it's just really easy for everyone to join nice and seamlessly and nice and simple. Everything else is pretty similar. It is an online meeting. So you'll have all of that detail. You've got the description options at the bottom. 
And on the right hand side, you've got options about who can present or so I can change that. It will be preset to whatever your organization settings are. Recording automatically. Meeting chat. So you can limit meeting chat. You can turn it off if you want it to be super smooth and you don't want to have that sort of interaction. And there is more options there if you want it. So this is a really nice light version for if you work with a lot of external people who may not use Teams and may struggle to join using the app or they may get asked to download the app and it just may be a little bit fiddly. It could also be if someone's not that tech savvy and struggles a little bit with technology. So this might work really nicely for those people as well. And you can just separate out those external and those internal attendees. So they were the five different meeting options that we currently have in Microsoft Teams. You've got your quick meet, you've got your online meeting, your offline meeting, and then you've got your webinar, which is much more technical, and this really nice virtual appointment where you can make it really easy for your external guests to join a nice, quick, light, simple version. So have a go at those, have a think about which option might work best for you and make sure you like and subscribe so you can check out all the rest of the videos in this channel.